Hey guys, Papa Pete back, and today I dug the Atari shirt out. It's been since last May when I had my video 15 games for the Atari 2600 that I still love to play today. And I hinted at that time there might be some more to add to the list. Well, it's finally time. So here we are, and I'm going to give you 15 more Atari 2600 games that I still love to play today. What do you think, Charcoal? Do you still like to play the Atari 2600? I know I do. Stick around. Let's go through the list. Papa Pete, Papa Pete, the old ass gamer. Pete, Papa Pete, the old ass gamer. If you haven't grown up by the age of 50, you don't have to. Well, let's jump right into the list of the next 15 games that I still love to play today on the Atari 2600. And remember, I've already had that one uh, video out with the list of the top 15. So if you're thinking, where is such and such a game? Maybe it was on that list. Or if it's one of your favorite games, maybe it's not on my list. I don't know. Maybe it's not even in my top 30. But anyway, let's start it off with... You remember the first list was really heavy on third-party titles? Let's start it off with an actual Atari Inc. title of one of their most famous arcade games. And we're going to start right off with Asteroids. Huge title on the Atari 2600. I can remember having this back in the day and playing it a lot. But for whatever reason, uh, it just wasn't a game or isn't a game that I revisit a whole lot today. I do play it once in a while, but you know, with the way things are, you can go back and you can play other versions of Asteroids, which I like better. For example, even the Atari 7800 version. I play that on my Evercade. I love that version. Or real, uh, genuine, uh, original vector versions, the arcade versions of Asteroids are amazing. Uh, I can remember a little uh, anecdote from back about before I ever had this game for the Atari 2600. I still remember being visiting my sister in Bangor, Maine and going down to the pool hall and I had $5 allowance to do me for the whole week. It was like 1980 and I blew the whole thing in quarters playing Asteroids on the, in the pool hall. But anyway, that's neither here nor there and I did finally get this game. I certainly did play it a lot uh, and I really do still like getting it out and playing it once in a while but it probably is just about right on my list at number 30 or for today number 15 anyway check it out if you haven't already asteroids who hasn't played that already huh so the next game number 14 is a game that we recently did on the atari io high score squad challenge i put in my entry i'm not very good at the game but it's a lot of fun and i can pick it up and play it really quickly and that is bowling Bowling's a fantastic game on the Atari. It's very, very simple. You just throw the ball and you tell it when you time your curve. Or you can play a game where you can actually control the curve up and down. Much less realistic, I guess. But not like any of them are very realistic. But anyway, very fun game. People still love to play this to game. Uh, love to play this game today. And uh, man, I don't know. Atari Bowling. If you have not checked it out, by all means, please do. Sim uh, simplicity personified but fun personified at the exact same time so now here's a game which I probably like more for the license and the actual gameplay although I do like the gameplay and I like it enough along with the license because I love the license that I've done a review on this you'll hear me say that quite a few times I certainly did in the first video, video where I've done actual reviews of these games in the past two three years ago and uh, that game right now is mashed by 20th century fox for the atari 2600 of course um very interesting game flying the chopper of course it has the music uh, suicide is painless and then it has the operating scenes which is almost like operation right the game operation so very interesting i'll still throw it on every once in a while play some of the different versions of it. If you want to know more about this game or if you've never played this game, by all means, please go check out my review. I go through the whole game, the different versions, and uh, it, it is very interesting. And the, the background behind it is very interesting. The way it was sold originally with a t-shirt as well, which I don't have the t-shirt. It was kind of neat. The t-shirts all were medium that were attached to the games, and you could mail it in to get your proper size. It's kind of a strange thing to do. Probably why they don't do it very often anymore. But anyway... 20th Century Fox, love third-party games for the Atari 2600, number 13, MASH. Try it out. Next up at number 12 is the very first M Network game that I have on my list, and it might not be one that you would immediately think about when you think of M Network games for the Atari, but it is Air Raiders. And one of the things that I like best about this, or the reason I pulled this one out over top of some of the other games, is one of the very few M Network titles 
that doesn't have an Intellivision counterpart. And I'm extremely familiar with the Intellivision versions of all those games. And for the most part, uh, although there are differences, I generally prefer the original Mattel and television versions as opposed to the, the recreations. So these are all ports. Uh, this one isn't specifically a port, uh, but it's about the only one. And that's why I like this one so much. Now, it's a very simple game as are most Atari 2600 games, frankly. But there's just something about it that I always enjoy playing. Uh, over and over again trying to capture or shoot down as many of the fighters as I could in the formations and I got to be pretty good at, at it back in the day but uh, every once in a while I still love to pull this one out and give it a little go and it's a little bit harder than I remember to be quite honest but anyway again you may be familiar with the uh, Mattel and Television but you didn't get a chance to play Air Raiders because it never did come out for the Intellivision check it out it's a lot of fun and now let's get on to number 11, and that's another Atari Arcade port. Maybe one of the best ones going, and that is Berserk. I can remember when this game came out about the same time as Defender, and everybody had to have the new arcade ports. And the one thing I noticed that it's different than the arcade, but it plays extremely well. It might be one of the absolute best uh, arcade ports that's available. I can think of one other one that was a little bit different that I might like a little bit better, but maybe we'll look at it later on. But let's just suffice it to say I did a review of this one. Uh, I found that it transferred over to the Atari 2600 platform very well, and I really enjoy playing it right to this day. Berserk, everybody knows the game? Check it out on the Atari 2600. As for number 10, we're really sticking heavy with the Atari titles this time. It was the other way around. It was third-party titles, the first 15. Now we're getting into some of the Atari ones, and that is a game that a lot of people seem to really love, and that's Video Pinball. Fantastic game. Simple game again. You have the tilt function with the joystick. You have the flippers with the joystick. Uh, they did a session on this, a uh, uh, two-week challenge on the Atari I.O., uh, high score squad challenge oh about a year and a half ago it was the first one that i took part in because it just sort of caught my eye i saw a video from a friend probably atari creep who uh had some gameplay on there and i went right to that site and i started playing this game because i really do enjoy this game there's a type of game that once you learn the knack of that tilt you could really let it run for a long time bouncing the ball up and down the chutes to, to get those wraparound numbers but uh anyway of all the pinball games on different systems they're fantastic ones nowadays incredibly realistic gameplay and physics but back in the uh late 70s early 80s this really was the cream of the crop of all pinball games as far as I was concerned. Video Pinball, I hopefully have had a chance to play it. If not, get on it. As soon as I say we're going to be heavy on Atari titles in this, uh, this video, I go to number nine, which is another Activision title. Is it the first Activision? It's the first Activision of these, uh, this, these 15. There were a ton of Activisions in my first 15, by the way. Anyway, Laser Blast. Simple game, but it was fantastic because this was the very first game back in those days. I can remember where you played as the ships as opposed to the... the uh, whatever it was, the guns at the bottom. And it was almost like a reverse bottom shooter because it was a top shooter. Yeah, exactly. But you were the ships that were coming down. And the premise was ingenious. And it really did take our attention or get our attention back at those at that time. Um, yeah, I don't know how to say it. You can say, oh, well, it's a simple game. We've seen tons of games like that now. Eh, really not that many. But uh, back then, that was the thing that everybody noticed about this game. Now, you can play this game. You can get good at this game. You can get to the million points to get the super badges that are available for this game back in the day. But uh, bottom, line was, bottom line was, it did something innovative. It flipped the bottom shooter world on its ear and now even to this day i still enjoy putting this game in and playing it for a little while you know just because it's different it's different and it's historic almost at the time it's hard to explain to somebody who wasn't around back in that day who loved video games back in the late 70s early 80s uh, when some of these games come out especially from activision and this title in particular they all did something different than what the norm was at the time. And it made them stand out, and that's the case with Laser Blast. Still love to play it to this day, and it deserves to be on this list. So let's stick with the Activision games. We'll go to number eight, and number eight is Activision Skiing. 
Again, I've said it before, most of these games are rather simple games. This one is too, whether you play slalom or whether you play the downhill, uh, the object is to get the fastest time possible. And at the end of the day, I can remember we had this game back when I was a kid. Actually, it belonged to my brother. My brother sort of mastered it because the slightest touch, the slightest angle of your skier will change your time by, you know, in the hundreds of seconds. So you had to be extremely precise in the in the direction, the path that you took down the mountain. And he had it right down to a science. You couldn't even touch him. He would just hit the perfect, you, you wouldn't even see the skier turn. He'd just tap it so lightly and your skier would move over just enough different places. It was really kind of neat. But uh, it was a game of real finesse, let me tell you that. And even though it's you have to really master it to get that good at it, anybody can pick it up and play it, and they're going to have a lot of fun. Any skiing game is like that. This is very similar uh, to in television skiing. Not a lot of differences. Frankly, I like this one a little bit better, but I'm really looking forward to skiing on the Miko. It's going to be one of the packing titles for that when it comes. And those are going to be some fantastic games as well. Anyway, uh, what was it? Number... Seven, number eight on my list, skiing. That is simply fantastic. I think I might play a little bit of that right as soon as I'm done recording this video. Well, guess what? Not an Atari game here either at number seven. It is a Parker Brothers game, and it is the very first Spider-Man game ever made on a home console. Uh, Spider-Man by Parker Brothers for the Atari 2600 was a very simple web slinging game climb the building uh, get to the top swing past the green goblin and deactivate the bomb which was just this flashing block at the top it uh you'll get a lot of people again that will compare it with other spider-man games and say oh that's simple that's not fun it doesn't do it but man back in 1982 or 83 when we played this game <laughs> we absolutely loved it and it's still fun to throw on and to climb up a few of the buildings this day and age and and the physics of the way you uh, swung on the web and you had to hit the targets right to make the web stick it was just simply a lot of fun and uh, it still is to this day so if you haven't tried out spider-man for the atari 2600 but you've heard bad things about it forget them give it a try yourself and uh, i'm sure you'll probably like the game quite a bit oh and guess what i also did a review for this one so check that out as well Okay, so we got number six, and number six, we'll get back to an Atari game, but it's not one of the Rainbow Box games, it's a Gray Box game, and it's another licensed game, and that is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Kind of controversial for this list, because it's not really a pick-up-and-play game that uh, you just play for a few minutes like uh, and try to get the high score. It's actually an adventure game, and it's one of the very first games that had a finish, uh, and had a lot of... Uh, puzzling involved trying to figure out what to do and where to do it. The great Howard Scott Warshaw, his second game right after uh, Yar's Revenge, which was in my first list. Um, but we did have this game. We did figure it out back in the day. And to this day, I still enjoy putting it on and doing things like, well, first of all, completing the game, but second of all, there's Easter eggs in it, special Easter eggs, trying to find those. And I did a stream back last spring where I played, it was a tribute to Howard Scott Warshaw, I played his games and I got the Easter eggs and all of them. So I'll put a link to that video where I did the, the gameplay and you can check it out. But uh, overall, yes, it is a complicated game to play. It's not typical for a list like this because uh, because you can't just pick it up and play it quickly, but it's still one of the games that I most like to pick up, put in and play today. So it has to be included in this list. Um, Fantastic uh, license port, fantastic ingenious game by Howard Scott Warshaw, as I say all of his games are, whether it be Yard's Revenge or whether it be E.T. I'm sorry, I still love E.T. And I love this one even more. So anyway, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Doesn't get any better than Indiana Jones. So for number five, number six was a licensed game. Number seventh was a Parker Brothers game. So let's combine the two. And for number five, we'll have a licensed Parker Brothers game. I can still remember this one coming out. Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, the first Star Wars game. And we loved it. It's such a great premise they took out of The Empire Strikes Back, uh, fighting the uh, the Adats. And um, it's just so much fun, so difficult, uh, but you could get good at it, you know? And it just had so many different aspects of the gameplay, like the, the, the ability to land, to re... Uh, 
regenerate your your fighter, uh, your snow speeder actually is what it was, and um, the special spot that it would that would appear on uh, on the adats that you could hit that with one shot. Otherwise, it took like what 64 shots to take one down. Um, man, when they come out with this, Star Wars is hot. Like there was no home video. There was no. Uh, all we had were toys, you know. Uh, you couldn't just go watch Star Wars whenever you wanted to. Like, I could turn it on right now and watch it if I want. That wasn't a possibility. I saw it in 1977, and I had to wait four years before I could see it again, okay? These were all out by then, so this meant so much to us to have a little piece of Star Wars. I read the novel 12 times in those four years, right? Uh, bizarre, really, but that's just the way it was. It was a different era. And when this came out and brought Star Wars to the home consoles for video game fans, uh, simply phenomenal. That's why Star Wars in the arcade, the tie, TIE Fighting, the Star Wars arcade that we all know, the Vector game, is so beloved by the people from back at that era. It's a fantastic game for anybody to pick up and play today, the Star Wars arcade game. But for those of us who were back then, it was really something special. And so was this, Empire Strikes Back. I still could pick that up, put it in, and have a lot of fun with it today. Beautiful. We're getting down to the crunch now. This is number four on my list, and I'm Canadian, of course. Activision Ice Hockey. We all wanted to get the best ice hockey game we could play. The only thing we had that was kind of like hockey on the Atari was in Video Olympics, you know? So would this one come out? The way they did the two-on-two -two hockey with the puck going back and forth on the stick to affect the angle of how you shot it, it was it was ingenious. I did a review of this one as well, I believe, so I'll link that down below. But uh, I really enjoyed this game back in the day, and it's still fun to pick up and play today against a computer, or even better if you could play it head-on-head -head with somebody else. Um, man, Activision put out some absolutely fantastic games, and for them to hit this genre, ice hockey, which is so huge, especially here in Canada, but it was loved everywhere. People all over love this game. Give it a try if you haven't already. I still like to play this quite often, actually. Anyway, I'm sure a lot of people will look at me and go, how could that game not be in your top 15 picks? Well, it's close. It's number 18, number three in this list, but I'm talking about David Crane's Pitfall. The last Activision game on this list, okay? Just to give you a little bit of a hint. But, uh... One of the most historic platformers ever really introduced the platforming genre, even though it doesn't scroll it's screen to screen like most of the games or all the games were at that time. It created a huge kind of open world feel. And I can remember back in the day playing this game and thinking you'd never complete it. Well, you can complete it. You can get all the all the treasures within the 20 minutes. And I think the top score you get is like 114,000 points or something. It's right around there anyway. Um... But still, it's so much fun just to put it on and play it. And something as simple as the sound effect when you did the, the Tarzan yell, when you jumped onto the vine, just added so much to the game. Um, I don't know what else to say, really, but it's historic. Uh, it started it all. I don't have Pitfall 2. I have not played Pitfall 2 very much. I'm sure it will be on my lists as well. But let's... Let's uh, pay tribute to the original right here. David Crane's Pitfall is probably, in my opinion, not only the second best-selling game ever on the system, but probably, uh, probably the most historic, and it created the groundwork for so many things uh, to come on all kinds of different consoles. Not to mention 5,000 Pitfall games on every platform going for the next 45 years. So anyway, Pitfall number three on this list Gotta play it. Gotta try it out. If you haven't played it, gee, I can't believe it. Try it out. So I said earlier about Atari arcade ports and what was probably the best Atari arcade port going, and in my mind, that would be Missile Command. Did a review of this game as well. Uh, check it out. Link's down below. But uh, Rob Phillip did an amazing job taking the trackball game and bringing it over to the Atari 2600. It's got an amazing feel to it. And I still enjoy putting it in and playing it to this day. Uh, I could do so right now and probably spend an hour playing it. It's just so much fun. Mind you, I could spend an hour playing it. There'd be lots of different games that can't get that far in it, really. I mean, maybe five, ten minutes per game at the most. But anyway, number two on my list, Missile Command. Fantastic port of a fantastic arcade game. Check it out. 
And now we're up to the number one game on this list of 15 more classic games I still love to pop in and play on the Atari 2600. And it's the all-time classic. It's the game that made the Atari 2600 system. Brought it from being at this level up to this level. And that is Space Invaders. I got mine in, I think, Christmas 1981. And I got a copy of Space Invaders with it. Of course, it was the first game that we put in and played. Yeah, we played Combat. We played Superman. All these other games that I picked up at the same time or had at the same time. But this was hot. This was the big uh, arcade hit that really brought to the, was brought to the Atari and made the system what it became. And uh, I'll tell you the truth, I really enjoy playing the Atari 2600 version of Space Invaders a lot more than I enjoy playing the arcade machine. Uh, I played the arcade in like Fun Spot, New Hampshire. I played it back in the day a little bit. Uh, I've also played it in emulation. Nothing compares even to this game. It was fantastic, this port. Uh, and I still, uh, play this game quite a bit. I like putting it in. It didn't quite make my top 15, but man, I had a hard time. It was one of the ones that was sort of taken in and out of the pile a couple times, so it certainly tops out my list for the next 15, huh? And just as a little bit of a preview, there's going to be a new series coming down the pipes. It's going to be Papa Pete versus Go Game Go. We're going to do some head-to-head -head Atari 2600 and probably other systems as well. Uh, action, some competitions, uh, and the game we're going to start out with is Atari 2600 Space Invaders. It's just favorite, and uh, it's uh, one of the games that I just, one of the very first games I ever have of the system. I'm really looking forward to, to the competition with Jeff. We'll see how it goes. The videos will be out shortly. Uh, it's going to alternate between his channel and the Go Game Go channel. So check out Go Game Go, and then the, every other one's going to be on my channel. So we'll get a good look. Hopefully that's out within the next couple of weeks. Well, we'll start right off with Space Invaders. Again, a game that, yeah, I've played it within the last week. So it's a game that I still love to pop in and play a little bit, even in 2022. Well, guys, that's it for 15 more games on the Atari 2600 that I still love to play today. If you haven't had the opportunity to play some of these games, by all means, find a way to do so. There's so many options out there nowadays, whether it's compilations on almost every system going, or emulation, or online sites, or even getting yourself an Atari 2600, get an original system from back in the day. The carts aren't very expensive. You can usually get them for three, four, five bucks a piece. Uh, I highly recommend trying it out because let me tell you, there's a lot of entertainment to be had right here in this pile. Anyway, guys, thank you for sitting through the whole video, Charcoal. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We will see you in the next video, guys. Take care. Papa P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. If you haven't grown. Hey, Brett Weiss here, host of Tales from a Retro Gamer and the author of The SNES Omnibus and many other books. You have been watching Papa Pete, the old guy gamer. He is in fact so old, he's probably as old as me, maybe even older. What the hell?